another excellent animal. Thank you. Hardly any point in making a close examination, but the regulations demand it. Well, we'll take him, top dollar. How many is that? 48. Any Paiute activity down your way? No. Nope. No sign of any in the trail, either. I understand you had a problem, huh? Yeah. I was so glad to get these remounts. We've ridden our horses to skin and bones. You raise fine horses, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. There's a war party operating out of the hills up to the north. Headed by Wahi. Why? He was killed in the Stalton raid. Well, that's what we thought. They came down with a band of reservation jumpers, looting, killing, stealing. It's been harder to catch than a mirage. We did find his camp the day before yesterday. We might have had him, but we moved too soon. Nothing except a bunch of women, children, old men. Are you going after him? Yes, but not until I've delivered the prisoners to the reservation. By that time, the trail will be too cold. By the way, one of the prisoners is a white woman. Where's she from? I wish I could tell you. Her reluctance to talk is understandable, though. She's Wahi's squaw. She's got his child, half-breed papoose. Are you taking her to the reservation? I offered her transportation to any city and town in the state. She insists on going to the reservation. You want me to talk to her? I was hoping you'd say that, Mr. Cartwright. Maybe you can get her to tell you more than just her name. What's her name? Calls herself Nem Yope. English translation, she who resists. I'd hope you might know each other. May I speak with her? I have an inspection to make. I'll be back soon. Beautiful boy. 
you've been treated well? Yes. You, uh, you don't have to go to the reservation. I want to. How long did you, uh... How long were you with Wahi? A long time. Do you love him? I'm his squaw. Do you love him? I lived in his teepee. I bore his son. My son. My son is all that matters. Does that answer your question? Well, you know, we're, uh, we're pulling out tomorrow morning. I'd sure like to have you come along with us. I want to go to the reservation with the other squaws. I figured we could take you to Virginia City and help you find you know, your family. We must have someone somewhere. There's no one. You're sure? Have you ever been on a reservation? No. Well, it's, it's not for you. Believe me, if you love your son, then you must think of him. I think only of him. I've never been to a reservation, but I've lived in Nevada towns before. I know the people. I know what they would do to the son of a white mother and a Paiute father. I can spare him that torment, and I will. Why do you think the reservation will be different? What do you expect to find for him there? Equality. If you don't mind, I'd like to go back to the other squaws. Of course. Well, I'd like one more favor. We're having an early supper. Consider it a kindness if you would join us. On one condition. No more questions. No questions. We ain't used to serving fancy here. Best we could do. Oh, it looks very good. Very good, thank you. Yeah. You want seconds? Yeah. Here's the money for those remounts. The Major seemed to be pleased. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, put that chair over there. We need it. And fellas, let's not have any conversation when she gets here about Wahi or what she's doing here or where she's going. Just want to make her feel like she's among friends. What's happened to her makes no difference at all. Come in, come in, please. Uh, let's meet everybody. It's my son, Hoss. Howdy, ma'am. And my other son, Joseph. This is Candy. And well, this is uh, Namio Pei. Never meet, ma'am. Uh, sit down. Makes it comfortable. Well, I hope you brought your appetite with you. Mm. <laughs> Mighty good. Yeah, you know, after two weeks on the trail, there's something about just a clean tablecloth making food look good. <laughs> yeah. Got some pretty country here. How are you making out with that, that horse of yours? Him? Well, I uh, think it's a tie. He tried to kick me and I backed him into a thistle. You know, Candy's got a running feud with his roan horse of his. He was out chasing a stray the other day and a horse went ran him into a tree and he got caught up in the limbs. That never happened. The funniest thing I ever saw, Candy hanging up that tree upside down. I think I'll just get himself another horse. You're 
being very kind, all of you. You're trying very hard. But you're as uncomfortable as I am. Well, sorry. I can't help wondering what it was like, how I lived, what was done to me. You're too polite to ask. There'll be many who won't be. Oh, ma'am, it ain't that bad. We had a lady from Virginia City about seven or eight years ago that got captured by the pilot and stayed with him two or three years and came back. Did she have a baby? A half-breed baby? <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, what will happen to Wahi? <clears throat> well, uh, if he surrenders... He'll never surrender. Well, if he's captured, then uh, he'll be brought to trial before an army court, and if he's found guilty, he'll, uh, he'll have to pay the full penalty. Death by hanging. Yes. If he fights, he'll be killed. You'll just have to excuse me. Alicia? Alicia? You knew me all the time. Almost from the first moment. Four years ago, White Fork Crossing, your, your husband was a cattle buyer there before the raid. Why didn't you say so? Oh, let me alone. I was waiting to hear you say that you wanted to go back home. I have no home. Yes, you have. Your husband, Wayne, he, he's in Virginia City. He spent a year searching for you. He thinks you're dead. I am dead. He's been living there for three years. If he knew that you were alive... Stop! Stop, I don't want to listen. He's your husband. He's your husband, was and is. He wouldn't want me. He thinks I'm dead. Let him go on thinking that. What about your child? What do you want for your child? Everything. Everything. Yet you would take him to a reservation. To face a life of misery and hopelessness. There'll be no equality for your son there. Not for boys, neither white nor Indian. Only rejection. I'll talk to the Major. I have Wayne. Need us here, or, or you'll leave with us in the morning. Plenty of blankets here on the buckboard, ma'am. We can make a bed for the baby. I'd rather hold it. Anything you say, ma'am. Ship herself. I was with Pa in White Fork, but I didn't see her there. Do you know her husband? He's got a good business. He works hard. He's got a proud and proper, though. I got nothing against him, but uh, it's the impression I got. A little too proud, maybe. Huh? That's what I was thinking. 
On the other hand, I was wondering what I'd do if it was me she was coming home to. I asked myself the same question. I didn't get an answer. Send a telegram to Wayne. Told him we'd be home in four days. Ask him to come to the Ponderosa. talking about? I didn't cry but once. I was closer to him than you were. He was exercising his lungs. That's why babies cry, you know, to exercise their lungs. How do you know that? Speaking of exercise, Joseph, I thought you and Candy were going to build a box store. Well, yeah, we are. Where? Right here in the living room? Oh, we just finished our lunch. We're just going to play with a little fella for a few minutes. <laughs> Paul, I saw Wayne Purcell at the post office. He was just waiting to make sure when we got home. Said he'd be out in about an hour. Oh, good. Yeah, we, uh, we better get back to work then. Yeah. Good evening. Here, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Something you ought to see over here. Huh? Like the Major said, they headed northeast. They hit a ranch on Miller Creek. 200 miles from here. Sure moving fast. Yeah, they had to. A troop of cavalry on their trail. Nap time for this young man. He's a mighty pretty little guy. <laughs> Is Wayne coming out here? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, I meant to tell you, Hans just brought the message. He'll be here within the hour. <laughs> for the last four years, I didn't think I'd ever be frightened again. It looks terrible, but I, I tried to fix my hair the way Wayne liked it. Your hair's beautiful, and you're beautiful. I know you're lying. Thank you. Mr. Purcell is coming down the road. All right, young lady. I've got some things to do with the boys. I'll go out the back way. Have a face yourselves. Now, smile and go meet your husband.
Alicia. Alicia, it is you. It, it really is you. Where did you come from? Oh, How did you get here? The Cartwrights brought me back. The Cartwrights. After the White Fork Raiders, I searched for you for months. I, I couldn't find a trace. Come inside. Yes. Hey, you, you look wonderful. You, you do. There's so much to tell you. You don't have to tell me anything. Oh, what's happened doesn't matter. What's important is that we're together and we can start all over again. Oh, Wayne, please. Alicia, listen to me. I have done nothing for the past four years but work, work, work. And I've done very well. I, I've got so much to give you now, it'll make up for everything you've missed. Don't you want to know what happened to me? But I do know. I know. You were a prisoner. It was terrible. It had to be terrible. <laughs> but you escaped. Wayne, please, wait. Well, why? Wait here. Why? Alicia? Alicia, where are you going? I'll, I'll be I'll be right back. It's all right. He's my son. Or do you know? Yes, I know. It's Wahis. I was his prisoner, his squaw. Why? Murder that red handed butcher. And you dare bring this home? What was I supposed to do? He's my son, too. He's my flesh and blood. Should I have pretended he was never born, just walk away and leave him? I thought you were dead. I could live with that. But this, how in heaven's name do you expect me to feel? I don't know, Wayne. I truly don't know. A filthy savage. Didn't that matter to you? Yes, it mattered. But I'm a coward. I didn't want to die. Coward. No. There's another name for a woman like you. I ask one kindness of you. Go away. Quickly. And gladly. Cousin in Omaha. 
we expect to find in Omaha? A home for myself and my son. Suppose your cousin feels the same way your husband did. Mr. Cartwright, it's none of your business. I took your advice once. I don't need or want any more of it. You're right. No more advice. Randy? what would happen, and I was right. Yes. And I was wrong. I should have prepared, Wayne. But since I brought you here, I'd sure like to know what happens when you leave. If my cousin won't have us, we'll go to the reservation. Sure is a handsome child. May I? Come up here, young fella. There we are. Well, you know, I sure do like you. Yes, sir, I like you a lot. You know what that means? No, how could you? You don't know the meaning of the word like or love or hate or any of those things. It just sounds as far as you're concerned. You're too young to understand them. Yes, and you're too young to, to know that right now people hate you because of the accident of your birth. But you're not too young to understand that, are you? You're willing to hide him or take him to the reservation? To protect him, yes. To protect him or yourself. Tell me, is it because that you're so worried about what people think about you that you want to hide him? You're even willing to hide yourself? Why hide? There's a simple solution. More advice, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. There's a good orphanage near Sacramento run by the Catholic sisters. They love to have a child like this. Why don't I have Joseph hitch up a, a team to the buggy? Then you can take him there tonight. And that way, there'd be no child, no problem, simple solution. Oh, damn you, Ben Cartwright, if you think for one oh, minute... Oh, yes, you're willing to fight for him, are you? Good. Then why run? Why not fight right here in Virginia City? <laughs> not. <laughs> How's that on the porch the last five or ten minutes? Got a little loud in here. Yes, I guess it did. Now, what happens now? I wish I knew. Town, although I'm not an expert. You do have business at the bank. Yes, of course, but I, I want to introduce you to Elizabeth Bowen. I'd have known her for a long time. I'd rather you didn't. If I'm going to stay in Virginia City, I have to face these people. I might just as well start here and now. I'll meet you back here. I, I, the neckline is so good. Yes, but well, what about this? I'll be with you in a minute, huh? I'm in no hurry. Uh, oh, then there's the waistline. Maybe, look, maybe this dress. 
this is more what you had in mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, this is attractive. This is very attractive. Wonder ladies, my baby is Paiute. Half Paiute. This is lovely. Oh, oh yes, it's, it's pure silk. The very finest quality. And just the color I've been looking for. I want this silk made up in the dress you just showed me. I want the material now. But, Mrs. Smith, I And I don't want the cloth that's been unrolled from the boat. something? You're as pretty as a $40 filly. Now, on account of your so pretty old hate's gonna buy you a drink. Come on. Let me go. Oh, come on. Now, don't get mad. I'm trying to be nice. Together. I don't even mind the baby. Think you're too good for me, huh? Ain't no woman carrying no pile brat too good no. for me. No, stay away. No. <laughs> no, stop it. No, stop! Up you go. Candy, I want you to take Alicia and her son back to the Ponderosa. Mr. Cartwright, if there's trouble here... Nothing I can't handle. Dropped your hat. <laughs> well, I never even seen Carl Wright till after I was down. I mean, he uh, he snuck up on me, you know, hit me from behind. Well, he didn't even give me a fair chance. This will make you the biggest cattle broker in Virginia City. Thanks to you, Mr. Green. No, thanks, Astor wanted. You burned it. Carrie ain't a Paiute kid, ain't she? Well, she ain't no better than a Paiute. I don't care what Ben Cartwright says. And I'll tell him so right to his face. Do that. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, uh, we're in uh, buckskins and then uh, carrying that baby. Well I, well, I thought she was a Paiute. She's not a Paiute, but even if she wasn't... Yeah, well, she sure ain't. She's less than a Paiute. Well, she's less than dirt. Now, Miss Purcell is a guest in my house. If you raise your voice to her or try to touch her, I'll see to it that you're put in jail. Yeah, well, there ain't no law against talking to the likes of her. There's a law that protects women on the street. I'll see to it that it's enforced. Decent women, yes. But not trash. One more thing, Hake. Not only would you go to jail, but it'll take some while for you to recover your health before you're able to stand trial. That's a promise. Ever 
you're saying. No, better than she should be. We can all see that. Can we? Now, suppose it had been your wife that was taken prisoner. What would you want her to do? Kill herself? Mr. Barry? You've got a sister. You love her very much. I suppose she'd been taken prisoner. How would you treat her when she came back? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Do you know, Mr. Rogers? You have two beautiful daughters. Suppose it happened to one of them, and she had the strength and the courage to survive. Now, what would you do when your friends and neighbors turned their backs on her? That ain't ever going to happen to my daughters. Ain't never going to happen to your daughters. That's what everybody thinks. That's what everybody likes to think. It'll never happen to one of theirs. Well, it's happened before, and it could happen again. Could happen to someone very near and dear to you. So you'd better start figuring how you'd feel. Yeah. Start figuring. It's been a good day. See you tomorrow. I waited until your sons were gone. There's something I have to tell you. Mr. Cartwright, I'm leaving in the morning. I realize if my son's going to have any chance at all, it'll be in a big city like San Francisco or New York. Virginia said he has something that no other place can offer you. Your husband. I have no husband. Maybe. But when you had need of help, you saw his name on that sign. You turned to him. Didn't you? Didn't you? Good evening, Mr. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Come in, please. Nice to see you. Come in. You know, uh, you know Mrs. Marcel? Us. Uh, please, yes. come sit down. Oh, oh, no. We are here to, well, to speak for the Virginia City Women's Club. We were very distressed over what happened today. Yes, that was very distressing. But ladies, please sit down. Oh, uh, thank you. But uh, uh, we were afraid that something similar, perhaps worse, might happen again. Yes. To prevent that, to help you and your child, we've taken up a collection. And we are prepared to help you find a new home, a, a new start, someplace like uh, Carson City, Reno, someplace where you and your child will feel more comfortable. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Your kindness is overwhelming. The truth is you want to get rid of us. That's oh, the truth, that... isn't it? You hate me, you hate my child so much that you're willing to pay to get us out of sight. That that well, it won't work. Sense. We're not dirt. We won't be swept away. The only way you can help us now is to let us alone. Now get out, both of you. Get out! Ladies? I thought you did very well. I think I'm going to cry.
son's been asleep for hours. It's time I joined him. Busy place tonight. Hello. This is your night for company. It sure is. I passed a couple of your guests down the road a piece. They're now my ex-customers. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Purcell, good evening. I, I brought the silk you liked. You disappeared so quickly that I never had a chance to tell you that I'd be delighted to make a dress for you. Ten dresses, if you wish. Oh, thank you. Not at all. Oh, Ben. I heard what you said in the Silver Dollar Bar. I must have heard ten different versions of it. You certainly have the whole town talking. Is that good or bad? Mm, both, I guess. Tell me, have you got a room, a spare room here we can use? No, several upstairs. Fine. Then we can get started. Come along. We won't be needing you, Ben. This is woman's work. That's a very handsome boy. I brought along some yard goods and some dress patterns for him, too. Absolutely beautiful. No, oh, it's easy with a pretty customer. Hey, now she's blushing. I think it makes her even prettier. <laughs> you had me crying again. Stop it. <laughs> You've been so kind, all of you. Could I ask one more favor? Name it. Tomorrow's Sunday. I'd love to go to church. My pleasure. Yes, sir. I tell you, I don't know if that bonnet makes you look more like a boy or a girl, but your booties make you look like a boy. Do you like your new clothes? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. You betcha. <laughs> well, you know, you're a remarkable woman. You're not only beautiful, but you're on time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, I should have the buggy ready. <laughs> Correction, he brought the surrey. Any reason? Well, I thought maybe I'd go with you. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, help you in? Oh, you go to church, too? Yeah, we thought we would. All right.
see you both. Mrs. Purcell, Mr. Cartwright. Morning. seen you coming. Been a long time. Yeah, six years, plus a payday or two here and there. Oh, I'm a uh, I'm civilian now, Candy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Russell. Yes, sir. The Army figured that 30 years was long enough, so they retired me. What are you doing now? Yeah, scratching along with the chickens, you know, doing the best I can. Because the Congress voted the officers a pension. The enlisted men, we, we didn't even get a thank you kindly. Yeah, no. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, yeah, maybe you could. I, uh, I could use a little spot to camp on for a while. If... Well, that's easy. Ponderosa's a big spread. You pick out a spot. I'm sure I can clear it with Mr. Cartwright. A oh, man couldn't ask for more than that. Fact is, I uh, already picked out a likely spot. It's, uh, it's over here. Peace, you want to ride along? I'll show you where it is. Sure, lead the way. <laughs> Sergeant, you're back. Yeah. Hi, Sergeant. Sergeant, I'm beginning to think that uh, running into you wasn't an accident. You don't think I'd sandbag an old friend out of you, Candy? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. But it's in a good cause. Me and the boys here, a bunch of overage rejects, and we've been traveling together. All right, you squatters. Who gave you permission to camp here? We're just about as welcome as the plague. Every place we stop, somebody comes along, wants to move us on out. Well, this time, we're staying. Carson City people don't want ex-soldiers around here. Your kind make nothing but trouble. We've had all we're going to take. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Now, hold on, Candy. Man's only saying what he feels. We don't intend to make any trouble, Mr. Uh, we don't intend to move on either. We didn't come out here to argue. I'm telling you, get out, or we'll come back here with a posse and run you out. Maybe you didn't know, Mr. Gibson, but me and my boys here spent about 30 years looking trouble right in the eye. Never run before, and we're not going to run now. You'll run if we have to bring out every man from Carson City. 
This is Ponderosa land, Mr. Gibson. It's up to Mr. Cartwright whether these men go or stay. That's no problem. Ben Cartwright will see it our way. You better go see Mr. Cartwright. Candy, I was hoping you'd say that. You take over here, Tommy. Yeah. All right, Sergeant. Go. Ah, uh, Mr. Gibson's got a lot of reason for not liking old soldiers. Some of us have caused a lot of trouble. Right. Gunplay, holdups, stealing livestock, chickens, everything that isn't nailed down. That's right. Mm -hmm. I won't deny it. I won't even try. Criminals. No other name for them. If you let them squat on your land, you'll never be rid of them. Now, George, it is my land, so why don't you let me take care of that? There's no sense to you hanging around. We're sick of being asked for your handouts. We're not asking for charity. We aim to pay our own way. How? We brought our own jobs with us. Anybody ever hear a ginseng root? Ginseng? Yeah, for my sailing days. It's an oriental herb. They use it for medicinal purposes. That's right. More to the point, the Chinese here in this country will buy all they can get of it, and they'll pay a good price for it, too. Let me tell you something, Ben. If these has-been soldiers make one wrong move, we'll find a way to get rid of them, whether you like it or not. Come on, Al. Looks like I'm putting you in bed with your neighbors. I shouldn't want to do that. Now, don't worry about it. Mr. Gibson, he'll come around. I hope so. Well, guess I better be getting back. You know, the boys will be anxious to know how I made out. Sergeant, how you fix for rations? I've been in that camp. They're fresh out of everything. Well, you come by tomorrow morning early and pick up anything you need, Sergeant. That's, uh, that's not charity. It's a loan. All right, sir. If you put it that way, I'll accept. And with thanks. Candy. Sergeant. See you in the morning. Joe. Take care. How are you? Am I glad to see you? Oh, same here. Sure happy you could make it. Thank you. How'd you make out, Sarge? Oh, got good news. Cartwright says we can stay. We're going over there tomorrow morning, pick up a whole wagon load of rations. Oh, good. Jeff Gentry's here. Inside. Ah. Uh, used to be my good right arm. <laughs> Don't burn your Confederate money. I won't. Good. I'm glad you got here. You got enough stuff there to blow up the state of Nevada. Better too much than too little. Besides, you couldn't say what the target was. You don't really care, do you? As long as it's something you can blow to smithereens? Well, you can't uh, fault a man for enjoying his work. No. Well, maybe that's what makes you one of the best. Yeah, you better uh, stow your play pretties in there in case we have any visitors. I want them out of sight. Naturally, Sergeant. You still haven't told us why you got us together. There's one man still to come. I'm expecting him any time now. As soon as he gets here, you'll all know what I have in mind. I guarantee it's something you'll enjoy. That'll be nice. I haven't had much pleasure lately. I'll just keep that key until you need it. Jeff, you want eight? You better get it now. Days are long gone, Jackson. And no more Confederate colonels. This one here. He signed up in the U.S. Army as an enlisted man, and he was retired as an enlisted man. Any of you damn Yankees don't like the way I talk or act. Come on. 
quite a change, my son. Wonder I got here at all. Yeah. You got it? Take a look. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Webby. Cherokee. Uh, man, I want you to listen to me a minute. You can go on eating if you want. But you all been, uh, Wondering just why we're here, so I figure it's time that I told you. We're a company of experts. Every man here has been selected for his own special skill. Together, we're going to wind up with more money than the entire U.S. Army ever saw before. Oh, what? Come on, oh, Sergeant. How are we going to do that? Good. It took me a year to plan this. I'll tell you my own way, in my own good time. Well, we're listening, Sergeant. Yeah. We're soldiers, ain't we? Right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Should say ex-soldiers. Thrown out of the army to root with the hogs or starve. Soldiers. We've forgotten men. But we're going to do something to make them remember us, make them sit up and take notice. We're going to do something to make the whole world remember us. One thing we... We all want something that we all earn fair and square. We're entitled to our pension, right? Right. 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 Long We're overdue. Entitled to it. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's high time that we just helped ourselves. And that's why we're here, where the money is. In Carson City, Mint. We're gonna break that mint wide open and take every last red cent. Oh, 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 that's quite yeah. started. Well, Sergeant, we never get well, away with it. Sergeant, that, that's been tried before, and nobody ever even came close. <laughs> no, nobody ever had insurance. Come on over here, I want to show you something. going to operate strictly as a military unit. That's the first thing I want you to get into your heads. Military discipline all the way. One man in command. That's me. That's the way, way, sir. Are you with me? Right. You hold a frog and we jump. You said it. With me all the way, Sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. Salt and bacon. I'd surely appreciate a little cornmeal if you've got it to spare. I would too. I've been hungering for whole cake and fried cornmeal much for a year of Sundays. Yeah, we got plenty in the store, as you can help yourselves. All right, thank you. Cornmeal's right here, Jim. Thank you. You got it? Nice again. You bet. key to that locker, so I can't have any objection to you opening it up. I thought I'd just better find out why. Sergeant, 
Getting us into the mint is your job. Getting into the vault is mine. And if you had told me what you wanted, I would have come better prepared. Better prepared? I've seen you blow up a railroad bridge with less dynamite than you got there. That's true. And that bridge was made of pilings and planks, whereas the vault is of case-hardened steel. So you drill a hole, plant a charge, blow it open. Yes, I could do that in six or eight hours. Twenty-five minutes. We change the guards every two hours. The officer of the guard makes his round every 30 minutes. Which means we'll need nitro. Nitro. And how do you figure on getting that? I'll make it. Out of dynamite. And with a little luck, I won't blow up the camp while I'm doing it. But it's a slow job, Sergeant. Slow and careful. And that's why I thought I had better get started now. Three days. Does that give you enough time? It should. Good. What do you got there? What you get there? Gently, Sergeant. You keep shaking it and we'll both be missing an arm. So Ponderosa is the only place you could have got them. Why not? Oh, you fool, you. You risk the whole operation stealing something you don't even need. It's a big job, Sergeant. They might just come in handy. You'd steal anything just as long as it blows up, wouldn't you? Suppose the Cartwrights discover they're missing. They come down here, ask us what we intend to dynamite. Well, Sergeant, I have every confidence that you will think of something to tell them. Perkins. Thought you ought to know. Some of the men are griping. About what? Those who haven't been in Carson City think they ought to get a look at it before we hit the mint. The entire company will see Carson City tomorrow. That's part of the plan. That's all, Burton. Surprised to see you, gentlemen, in this neck of the woods. Thought you'd be going to church in Virginia City. It's closer to home. Yeah, we usually do. They got a visiting preacher over here, an old friend of Paul's. Ah, yes. Well, it'll be beneficial to all of us to hear the good word. Give us something to think about while we're out digging the ginseng root. The uh, services should be starting. Yes. Getty? Sergeant. I am. Uh, I don't remember you as being much of a churchgoer. Candy, the older you get, the more you start thinking about the hereafter, the great day of judgment. You know, I, I got to be prepared for just about anything in my time of life. Yeah, well, I got a notion that it's not salvation you got in mind. Now, to tell you the truth, you're right. I've just been trying to make a favorable impression on the good citizens of Carson City. Well, don't you think you'd be better off if you stayed out of sight? No. 
No, I want to convince them that we're just as honest and decent, clean living, no different than they are. I mean it. Sure, maybe that way they'd let us stay put someplace for a while instead of running us out of the country all the time. That's a good idea. As long as that's all you've got in mind. What else would I have in mind? I don't know. But an old sinner like you going to church seems a little strange. Ah, uh, <laughs> now. You better be careful. It's liable to get to be a habit. <laughs> Let's go find out. All right. Thank you. I never saw Jackson and Perkins run from anything in my life. What happened? I suppose I don't care for people looking over my shoulder. They play games, eh? Those men have been soldiering for 30 years. They ought to know by now it takes more than fire to detonate dynamite. But besides, as I think I mentioned, I don't like anyone looking over my shoulder, Sergeant. Your privilege. Next time you let me know, I'll take care of him. Oh, fine. Fine. While I'm out hunting you up, one of the men takes this bottle and shakes it. And you're short, two men. You telling me the truth, Jim? Is that stuff was. Was it that touchy? Touchy, Sergeant? Yeah. Nitro is the meanest stuff in the world to handle. Even when it's pure, as clear as water. You can't let it get too hot or too cold. You can't bump the container. You certainly better not drop it. Unless you want to depart suddenly. And this stuff is a long, long way from being pure. Matter of fact, it reminds me of a batch I made once. Blew up. Just sitting in the shade. Nobody around. At least, uh, I don't think there was anybody around. How are you going to get it from here to Carson City? I'll fill the bottle clear to the top so it doesn't slosh. I'll put it in a box packed tightly with torn up blanket strips. And when we get there, if we get there, I'll show you a trick you've never seen. How long is it going to take you to open up the vault? Four minutes, give or take 30 seconds. Of course, that's after we get to it. There'll be four sentries, one at each side of the building. And how do you propose to take them out? Maybe I'll show you a little trick you never saw before. of detonators missing from the Ponderosa storeroom. They were there when you and your men came for supplies, and they're gone now. You think we stole them, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I locked the storeroom after you left. Nobody's been in there till I went in this morning. Would you mind telling me what a box of dynamite caps has got to do with digging ginseng? Not a thing, Gaddy. But I, I will tell you something else. 
You're coming over here to look for them dynamite caps. Well, save me the trouble of coming after you. Coming after me? Why? Got a little job I need your help on in Carson City. Carson City. <laughs> I was right. Church going wasn't what brought you there after all, was it? No, it wasn't. Me and my men are gonna bust into the Carson City Mint. <laughs> you, oh, come on, you're joking. No, no, no joke. You're gonna open the front door for us. Oh, come on. Yes, I looked into it, I find out. Lots of times you deliver gold and silver there for Mr. Cartwright. So what you gotta do is go up and knock on the front door and they'll open it for you. You're insane. <laughs> oh, no, Candy. No, I will admit the idea well, it, it could take a little getting used to. And uh, oh, I, I kind of hate, hate to put you in the middle, but don't you see with your help, it's going to make the job a whole lot easier. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. <sighs> You're not putting me in the middle. Because you just showed me that I don't owe you a thing. Not loyalty, not respect, not even friendship. What's happened to you? You used to be a good top kick, one of the best. Maybe you didn't always go by the book. But when you bent the regulations, it was to protect your men. Now you're using those stripes to turn them into a bunch of outlaws. You all through? Yeah. All right. You had your say. Now you listen to me for a minute, young fella. I'm going to tell you something that even my own men don't know. And I'm not turning outlaw in my old age, either. Me and every one of them men out there served the country for over 30 years. And then they were turned out to pasture, to starve. That's why I'm going to take that gold from the Carson City Mint, and I'm going to hold it for ransom. People all over the country will hear about it. Now realize how desperate our situation is. And the newspapers will get hold of it. No. Yes, and they'll make Congress pass a law to give us our pensions. And then, then, Candy, I'm going to turn the gold back to them. No, that's not the way to do it. Even if you're lucky enough to pull it off, you'll just turn everybody against you. It'll work, Candy. Believe me, I tell you. No, it'll work. Well, you can count me out. <laughs> I'm going to have to show you a few things. Well, first off, that wagon over there with the insignia painted on the side is a decoy. It's going to get us to the front of the mint. It's going to get you shot. You don't even look like soldiers. No, we will. We will. A supply sergeant friend of mine has come up with four brand new regulation uniforms. Candy, everything's been planned right down to the last detail. Rifle. Ammunition, uniforms, nitro, and this. This is going to open the door of the mint for us. Of course, a lot of the good people inside could get killed. Save a lot of bloodshed if you'd open the door for us, Candy. So you're declaring war on the United States government? It can be that way, or we can get what we want without one shot being fired. It's all up to you. Oh, no, no. You're going to have to do it without me, Sergeant. Time up. I think you'll change your mind, kid. I'm sure hoping you will. Money. You all got your orders. You know what to do. Just make sure that not more than two of you ride into town at the same time. Good luck. We've had them out. Out. Take a fire light. Forward. Oh. It's 
nitro, Mr. Kennedy. Think about that on our rough ride into town. permission to stay, and then they just up and leave. Does that seem a little strange to you? Yeah, to put it mildly. I'd like to know what happened to Candy and those dynamite caps. And these tracks head for Carson City. But you this time they're not going to church. Seven minutes left. Make it 23 to be on the safe side. I told you I only need four. Ninety seconds. Bullseye candy. This cannon's aimed to make a bullseye right on the front door, said I'd meant. Yep, it's all loaded and waiting. All I gotta do is just let the spark to that fuse. Candy, we're gonna bust into that mint one way or the other. Now, you're gonna help us, you nod your head, yes. Because if you shake it now, you're gonna start a small war.
Kennedy. Liver in gold for uh, Ben Cartwright. Just a minute. and the rest of us stab into the room there, Tang Gag. Hartman, move on, move on. Move on. Get him in there. Move on. Move on. Get in there. Move in. Get in there. Quick. Right away. Hey, Candy over there, Tang Gag him. Keep your eye on him every minute. He's trickier than a bucket full of snakes. I know. I train him. Jeb, the ball's back here through these doors. Come on, get started. Well, then send somebody ahead of me, Sergeant. With what I'm carrying, I'd rather not get into a shooting match. Perkins. All clear. Come ahead. Let's go. Five minutes before. Can I help? Yes. Stay out of the way. Why would anybody want to leave a wagon parked right in the middle of the street like that? Don't talk, just keep riding. supplies out at the Ponderosa. Hey, that fellow back there at the wagon, have you ever seen him before? No. Could he be one of Russell's men, you think? Yeah, it could be. Joe, we better get some help. Cartwright just rode past. Bo's afraid they might have recognized the sentry. Now, that's your problem, isn't it, Sergeant? And you'd better get set to handle it, because this thing is going in exactly a minute and a half. boys rode past a few minutes ago. Maybe they recognized Jackson and maybe they didn't. Yeah, Tom, folks. They come and go. Pass by this place so often, they never really see it. Well, we hope they don't. If they can't right, should come back. Just uh, open the door and ask them in. I'll just do that.
Four minutes, ten seconds, Jeb. How much longer? Just as long as it takes me to light the match. Run, both of you. Russell and Cartwright says rode up, heading home. All right, Russell's man thinks we left town. He's still out in front of the mint. We get going, we'll take care of the wagon. Russell, there's something you haven't told us yet. Where are we taking this gold, and where do we split it up? We're not splitting it up. We're heading up into the Rimrock country as the unit. Find some place up there that we can defend. A place we can defend? There is no such place. Sarge, Bo says the street's clear. We've got to get moving. Right. You're not making any sense, Russell. Now, we all have a share in that gold. And if we split it up and run, every man for himself, some of us will make it. I am in command here. We're holding that gold for ransom until Congress votes us a pension. You mean give back the gold after all this? If we keep it, we're thieves. We do it my way, we're just fighting for our rights. We do it your way, we rot in jail or hang. I am still in cover. Ah. He drew first. Yeah, he drew first. Let's go. All right, the street is clear. Open the door. Sergeant Russell. He's shot. That's right. He wanted to give the gold back, and when I said no, he drew on me. You shot Sergeant Russell. Oh! Now you open that door. It's a long way to Mexico. Open it! I'll settle with you when we get to Mexico.
yellow bellies. Pick up those guns and hold them off till I get the nitro. No, you don't. It's all over. Same to me. Yeah. It seems like there's more people here the last time we came through. Well, maybe the cold's keeping them inside. I'm get inside in about a half minute myself. If the snow will hang off, we can get to that land before noon. Yeah. Whew. A lot warmer in here. Yeah, that coffee smells good. Help yourself. Thanks. Thank you. I'll buy a little stick of this fair whiskey. Hey, call. that sounds good. Good idea. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't run off of that. Ah. Tell you, the older a man gets, the colder the winter's become. <laughs> have you noticed that? <laughs> no, I can't say I have. You know the Sam Masters mine? Yeah, the yellow girl. How's the road up that way? Well, it's been snowing on and off, but as long as it don't blow and drift shut, it'll be passable. I'll tell you, one more of those drinks and some more of this hot stove, and I ain't gonna leave here. <laughs> well, we better be on our way, Hoss. Well, may I ask what your business with Sam Masters might be? Well, it's a, it's a personal matter. I have a reason for asking that question. Well, see, so you tell me a reason, and I just might give you an answer. It's a personal matter. How much do we owe you? Oh, no. I never charge strangers for the first drink. Well, thank you, friend. Yeah. Thank you much. You know, what this world needs is more fellas like that bartender and fewer like that guy at the... Stove. Yeah. See what your foolish delays have cost me, Tyler? I'm sorry, Colonel. Yes. Now the forces against us have doubled. Doubled at the very least.
Looks like we got the best snowpack in years, Paul. Yeah. Should be great for the spring grasses, huh? Yeah. Because Mr. Tyler insisted on wasting so much time, we have to move with some haste. Now, Colonel Hudson, I Two more that... men have gone up to the mine. Who they are, what their purpose is, I don't know. I do know they look very capable. How many men does that make altogether now? Depending on how many miners are still there, between six and a dozen, as nearly as I can determine. Stiff odds. You weren't hired to count, Sawyer. You were hired to fight, as I tell you to fight. Did I say I wouldn't? No, you did not. I don't need that, Sergeant. It's getting cold in here, Colonel. Now, I don't want anyone killed if we can help it, understand? All I want is to take Thomas Andrews prisoner. He calls himself main... Sam Masters now. My main concern is that we don't add to crimes already committed. Well, I don't see how we're going to get Andrews out of there without killing him. We'll force him to give himself up. Or the others to surrender him. Yeah, but Uncle Jim, if there... There's six or a dozen of them and only four of us. If I'm through Mr. Tyler, I don't see how we're going to do it. It's not how many you are in guerrilla fighting, Teddy. It's how many the enemy thinks you are. Saddle up. See you. <laughs> well, you How might as well get these on up at the corral. Now, you're going to stay till tomorrow, that's sure. Well, we were hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Run into much snow. Just enough to make the trip enjoyable. It's sort of quiet around here, Sam. Is your bunkhouse empty? I've shut down the mine horse. It's just my daughter and I. We're all that's left. Well, I'll look at the horses. Here, I'll, I'll take care of them, Bo. You go on in. See, right. see you all in a minute. Ben. Take the coat off. Mm. You remember my daughter, Ellen? Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Nice to see you again. Hello, Ellen. It's lovely to see you. And you're as lovely as ever. The image of her mother. You men, always flattering. We've been waiting the noon meal, hoping you'd get here. Hungry? Oh, starved. Now, would you rather look at the mine first? Well, knowing my son, Hoss, I think we'd better eat first. <laughs> If you men will sit down for a few minutes, I'll dish up the food. All right. Would you, uh, would you like something to thaw the frost? Well, I think that would be just right to warm the insides. <laughs> South Chapel, I say better than anything yet. Best color I've ever seen. Yeah. I know there's still a lot of pay and ore in the yellow girl. Yeah, I think so. Well, shall we uh, go in? Oh, I didn't expect you back so soon. Uh, Ellen, uh, put the pot on. I think these gentlemen would like it. Cup of tea. Anything you say. Does horse like something a little stronger? Yeah, I don't mind if I do, Sam. Thank you. It's right over there on the sideboard. Sam, I sure hate to see you sit out. Still a lot of money to be made in that mine. You're going to stand by your agreement to buy it back. Oh, of course, of course. It's just that I, I think it's more valuable to you now than when I sold it to you. You told me when I bought the mine from you that you'd take it back. Now, if I Sam, want to Sam, look, I, I brought the money with me. I got the cash. If you want to go through with the deal, that's fine. 
I want to go through with it. Here, let me help you, Ellen. I can manage, thanks. Well, and uh, I've sold the mine, Ellen. We're going to San Francisco. I'm glad for you. Now, you want to go, don't you? I want to settle down. I want to stay in one place. But it doesn't matter what I think or want. It's, uh, it's been rough on her, traveling the way we have. Really haven't settled down for long since I picked her up at her grandmother's after the war. I lived there all during the war, a nice home, sheltered. I don't know, I guess uh, I'm just not cut out to be a miner. Well, some people aren't. Uh, been restless ever since the war, you know, footloose. Tried my hand at several things. Uh, Successful at most, but after a year or so, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, sure. I guess I do, Sam. You're the wandering kind. I guess you just got to keep moving. Why don't you tell them why you're the wandering kind? Uh, Ellen, please. Tell them why we're moving, Father, and tell me. Hush, hush. I won't hush. I've explained the best I can. I haven't believed you, Father. I'd like to know the truth. Why did you change your name? Why have you been running and running and running? Please, Ellen, not in front of company. You promised me when we came here that we could stay here, that I could have a home and friends. And now we're running again, and I want to know why. Oh, the horses. Get down, Take cover. Can't see anybody. Take another look. Lieutenant, you'll be shot. I filled my part of the bargain. Uh, I don't think so. I was to lead you to Andrews, and you were to let me go. Wasn't that the agreement? It was. Well, from here on, it's up to you. I don't see any reason I should risk my neck now. I don't know Andrews is in that house. I haven't seen him. I only have your word for it. He's there, calling himself Sam Masters. Well, I'll know soon enough. Meanwhile, you'll stay here until I am sure. And for another reason. I think Andrews has the right to confront the man who betrayed him.
Colonel said nobody gets out of there. So stay alert. How many think you've done that, Sergeant? No way of knowing for sure. Could be half a dozen. All right. What's it all about? What can I tell you? They ran off with our horses. Thieves? Oh, Sam, stop it. Those men out there. They're the reason that you're willing to sell a paying mine. The reason you changed your name. The reason you've been running. Isn't that right? Ben. Hello, the house! There, behind a rock, see him? Yeah, I see him. Hudson. Who's Hudson? Colonel Hudson. Was he one? He wants to kill me. Why? Ask him. I will. We meet again. Yes. My name is James Hudson. Ben Cartwright. The man in that house that calls himself Sam Masters. I want him. Why? His real name is Thomas Andrews. He commanded a Confederate prisoner of war camp and was directly responsible for the deaths of many Union soldiers. In particular, ten of my men. I'm going to take him as a prisoner back to the site of that camp. He'll be tried there and punished there. And whose authority? An authority vested in me by my dead comrades. No, not enough. Well, don't worry. He'll be tried by the proper authorities. He wasn't forgotten by the Union forces after the war. He's just a loose end that hasn't been picked up. It's all cut and dried, isn't it? For you, not for me. There are two sides to every argument. And I'll have to hear Master's side before I can make up my mind. All right. But don't take too long. I'm prepared to break in. Try it. There'll be dead men in the snow. Might have known it would finally be Hudson who'd come after me. He's not a man to forget. Well, I've known you a pretty long time. I just can't believe you're guilty of the crimes he described. But I'm guilty, Ben. Now, Hudson says that there were an awful lot of people who died in that camp needlessly. Well. I just can't believe you capable of allowing a single person to die without at least trying to help him. I tried. There were 500 men behind that fence. 500 to provide for. Couldn't you do that? No. No, you, you couldn't just let them go. I could only keep them there with rifles. Couldn't give them enough food, water, medicine. But there must have been some food. Some. Not enough. Take a 
It's a powerful lot of food to feed 500 men. I'm not trying to deny my guilt. I was given the task of providing for those men. Well, the way I see it, you've been running because you failed. Isn't that it? I just wanted to find some place where nobody knew me, knew what I'd done. No matter where I settled, it wouldn't be long before somebody recognized me, point me out, whisper, that's Thomas Andrews, commanded Camp Stanley, where all those men died. Come here, take a look. If I can catch that horse, I can get out of here and get help. We can't stand him off long. Yeah, things look dangerous, Hoss. Too dangerous. That's a poor animal at best. You're going to have to catch him. And bridle them and saddle them. The odds are too long against you. Paul, the way I see it, we ain't got no choice. I'll make it. Don't worry about me. Just came out of the house. He got a bridle on a horse. He just rode off. Stop it. says he hasn't seen or heard a thing. Well, that's good. I... I hope your son is all right. Thank you. I hope so, too. Mr. Cartwright. What, Ellen? Is my father really guilty? Well... He was ordered to command that camp. Could he have turned the men loose once he saw that he couldn't take care of them? No. No, then, uh, then he would have been disobeying orders. And he could have been shot for that. But why? If he did it to save their lives... Because then the men would have gone back into the lines, killing Confederate soldiers. <sighs> yes, I suppose they would have. It's awfully difficult to... To know how to look at a man. I mean, here's a, a man who's put in charge of a prison camp. He's responsible for everybody inside it. He's got to take care of them. They die. There's nothing he can do about it. On the other hand, can you fault a man for obeying orders? I wish I knew what to think. 
So do I. You warm enough, Colonel? But maybe I should maybe I should warm that blanket for you. Confound it, Sergeant. Will you quit your fussing? I could make the fire bigger. The fire is big enough. Is he hurt? No, sir. He fell off his horse when I shot. I got the drop on him, tied him up. Well, it's been a long walk up that hill. Move over to the fire, warm yourself. For a man who goes around shooting at folks, he's got a mighty kind heart. I have no wish to harm you. All I want is Thomas Andrews. You ain't gonna get him. Stay on the alert, do you hear? Keep your eyes open and your ears open. There's no telling what they're liable to do next. Maybe I can sneak down there, peek in some windows or something, see how many there are in there. You stay here. If you're sneaking around, you get yourself killed. Shots. We'll see what happened. Right. And no killing. Oh. You're just a boy. <laughs> it hurts, mister. Come on. Yeah. I get in the house. Come on. Move. Oh. What'd you have to shoot me there for? Well, if you hadn't tripped, I wouldn't have shot you there. Anyway, you're not hurt. You're just branded. Man, I'm hurt. I'm hurt something fierce. I, I can't even move. Well, maybe that's just as well. You take care of a prisoner. I don't think he'll move, but if he tries to get away, you just call out. Oh, boy's all right. He's only scratched. His pride has hurt more than anything. 
But he did tell me that they've taken Haas prisoner. He's not hurt, though. I'm thankful. We're not out of the woods yet. The boy says his uncle's determined to take you back. How many of them are there? Well, he says a lot, but I think he's lying. They don't know how many we are. That's what he came down here to find out. That's why they're holding off. What are we going to do? I don't know. Do you have any ideas? I got there in time to see one of them help Teddy into the house. Was he hurt? Some, not real bad. I gave orders to stay away from that house. I know that. Did you try to help him? Well, you said no killing. There's nothing I could do. Now you've got one less man. They've got three miners, masters, Cartwright. You're outnumbered. You'd best give this whole thing up. You might ought to listen to what he says. Seems to me like it makes a lot of sense. I don't believe in those three miners. Well, there's only one way you can find out. Go in there and try to get him. What I'm trying to say is, I don't see why you'd want to get mixed up in a thing like this. It's the Colonel. He's my uncle. He's kin. But his old grudges aren't your grudges. Why'd you want to go gallivanting after him? I didn't go gallivanting. I went soldiering. Soldiering? That's a lot of men go soldiering. Where'd the world be if there weren't soldiers? Well, they'd probably be a lot better off. <sighs> You're the limit. I got an older sister just like you. She doesn't understand nothing either. You know, it takes a lot of hatred to bear a grudge like you do, Colonel. If you'd spent a year behind a fence watching your men die, you'd bear a grudge, too. But there was war on. You keep forgetting that. There are rules by which civilized men fight wars. Rules to die by. What difference if a man dies from hunger or a bullet? He's dead both ways. The first principle of warfare is to kill the enemy, isn't it? I spoke of civilized men, Tyler. You don't qualify. Colonel, you're still a prisoner. You're imprisoned by a fence of hatred as much as you were ever imprisoned by a fence of wire. But this time, there's a difference. Here, I'm on the outside. He's on the inside. And tomorrow morning, that fence comes down. If I have to tear it down with my bare hands. Up. What? Why? There's only two of us, a lot of them. Just one way it can end, one of both of us will be shot and be killed. And there's Ellen. Yes, there is Ellen. What about her? I don't want harm to come to her. You don't want harm to come to her. But you're quite willing to go out and give yourself up so that she has no father. That doesn't make any sense. You've got me guessing. Guessing? Yeah. <sighs> Colonel Hudson's absolutely certain that you're guilty. Ben, I just want to put a stop to the fighting. Do you want the fighting to go on? No. No, I don't. But there's a whole lot of difference between not fighting and total surrender. 
There's a middle ground somewhere. And we're going to have to find it. Now take off your coat. I'm going to have to leave you tied up here. I figured you would. What about him? Oh, he's going with us. He ain't no fighter. No, he's a Judas. He was Andrew's adjutant at the prison camp and his close friend. To save his neck, he agreed to lead us to Andrew's. Hey, you up in the rock. That's close enough. What do you want? A party with Colonel Hudson. All right, come on up. I'll tell him. Colonel Hudson, sir. That man Cartwright, he wants to parley with you. Stay here. Keep a close watch. Yes, sir. Sawyer, right behind you. What kind of man do I seem to you? A decent man. One standing in my way. Between decent men, there must be room for discussion. I'll listen. There's something to be said for your side of the story. There's something to be said for Masters, Andrew's side. I don't know what that could be. I've got documented proof he's a murderer. Come to the house. Tell your story, then listen to Masters' story. If we can't reach some kind of agreement, perhaps we can reach some kind of understanding. And if we reach neither? Then nothing has been lost but time. If we find one or the other, perhaps lives can be spared. All right. Here they come. Is he going to be shooting? Your uncle, Mr. Cartwright, and another man are walking together. And a man with a rifle is walking with them. But it looks more like talking than shooting. Oh, gosh almighty. Now what's the matter? Get my pants. You can't get up. It's uncle Jim and Tom Andrews coming face to face after all these years. Well, I'm going to die if I'm not there to see it. Get my pants. Please, get my pants. Major. Colonel. Oh, gentlemen, the, uh, the war's been over a couple of years now. It's ex-major and ex-colonel. Now I suggest we use our last names. Will Tyler, what are you doing here? I didn't want to, Tom. I... He told me you were here. He brought me here. My friend, you did that? You told him you brought... He threatened to kill me. There was nothing else I could do. Well, gentlemen, we came here for a purpose. I suggest we get started. Uncle Jim, I, I was wounded. Yes, so I understand. Well, not seriously. Branded is more the word on his backside. Who was the young lady? Mr. Andrew's daughter. No need to look, mister. No one else here. All right, gentlemen, let's begin. Now, you two have not seen each other since the prison camp broke up. Is that correct? I spent almost a year in a hospital getting over that camp. 
Meanwhile, Andrews had disappeared. My wife died just before the camp broke up. There were many memories I wanted to forget. This man is guilty of murder. I don't deny there were conditions. Oh, please. Of... Mr. Hudson, let's, uh, let's hear your story first. He kept us like rats in a cage, in a pestilential hellhole, under conditions too terrible to describe. No food, polluted water, no medicine to treat the diseased. I watched men who had served under me die one after another. And I promised each man before he died that this man, I would make this man, this Thomas Andrews, pay for his crimes with his life. And I shall. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I've heard of the conditions that often prevailed. And I know that what you're saying is true. But there are two sides to every story. And there were problems outside the camp. Mr. Andrews, would you tell us about them? I did my best. Failed. Couldn't provide medicine, clean water, food. But you did search the countryside for them. I did. I sent my foragers out 24 hours a day. There was so little food anywhere. Mr. Andrews, what was the cause of your wife's death? The same thing. She saved so much of her food for the children in the area. She had no strength. Disease came from the bad water. No medicine. Oh, Mr. Hudson, you see, some of your men died inside the camp. And his wife died outside the camp. He didn't go for a week at a time without food. Neither did you. All your men, you made that charge in camp, and I denied it. I deny it. We went no. for as much as a week at a time without a bite of food, not one morsel. I know for an absolute fact that your men were given a ration every single day. It wasn't much, but that much I could. Andrews, you lie. I do not, sir. Please, please, Mr. Hudson, please sit down. Who's in, the, who's in charge of the actual distribution of the food? Were you in charge of that? Will Tyler was. He was my adjutant, my provision officer. He'll verify. Tell him, Will. Will? Well, Mr. Tyler. Well, I, uh, carried out orders. I did all I could. According to Mr. Andrews, food was provided for the men in the camp. According to Mr. Hudson, the food never reached them. Is that true? That's not true. Well, I have no reason to disbelieve either of these two gentlemen. But I tell you, it's not true. What happened to the food that was not delivered to the men in camp? Well, I gave it to them. All of it. You gave it to them? Mm -hmm. All of it? Mm -hmm. Now, gentlemen, isn't it true that in those days, a wagon load of food fetched a very fine price? No, I didn't. I didn't do anything like that. You never sold any food outside the camp? Mm -hmm. At any time? No. At any time? Well, well, I don't know. I'm... You don't know? Or you, you don't remember? Or did you indeed sell food outside the camp? 
Mr. Tyler, did you sell any food outside that prison camp? Did you? Did you? Mr. Tyler. Answer, Tyler. Sawyer, stop him. I missed. You mean you got away? Missed his legs. Killed him. Well, you take good care of this young man. I surely will. Ted. I'm getting well fast. Good for you, Ted. Hudson, are you going to stay around these parts? No, Hoss. Uh, I'll leave my nephew here till he gets well, but I have urgent business in the East. Stetson, I hope life will be easier for you from now on. Well, thanks to you, I think it will. Bye. We'll be seeing more of you, I'm sure. Thanks, Hoss. Strange few days here. I don't quite know. The well, same. With the color in that mine continues to improve, you're gonna need more capital. You see me before you talk to anybody else here. Yeah? I'll do that, Ben. Take care. Take it easy, Sam. Awesome. 